Hey, what's happening all you pirates and samurai out there in the land of Wano? I'm Dooz this Din and I am here with chapter 999 of One Piece, which opens up with a beautiful color spread, which is the first half of the 1000 chapter color spread. And it is actually an homage to the 100th chapter of One Piece. The color spread for that. This time, including all the current Straw Hats, including Jinbei. You actually get to see a preview of that in one of the advertisements from Shonen Jump. So I love it. I love when Oda does these callbacks. And this thing is going to be massive. But let's jump into the chapter proper, which is titled The Sake I Brewed to Drink With You, which is such a like charming title, all things considered. It really is fabulous. But we actually pick up in Onigashima, that flashback that I knew was happening because you saw us transitioning into that flashback last chapter. And it immediately kicks off in Onigashima, where Ace's men are telling him, Ace, don't do this, let's go back, as Ace is clashing with none other than Yamato. We see that he already has his Flare Flare Fruit abilities, and he's like clashing with Yamato, he's just like, I'm Ace, I'm here to fucking take Kaido's head, I'm here to kill that motherfucker. And Yamato just explains, yet yeah, my father's out right now, and most of his officers are out there with him. And they're just like, well, Ace and his men are like, father? Wait, Kaido's daughter? The shit? And Yamato just looks around and is just like, you've also kind of done enough damage around here? So, oh, I don't know, man. I don't really care about this place, but, I mean, if you just want to trash the place, go for it. But then Ace kind of notices Yamato's change, and he's just, he, he has this look of like, what's going on here? It's like, and I feel like he realizes that Yamato is a prisoner here. You know, despite the fact that she runs around free, it's just like, okay, this person is a prisoner. But we then also find out the reasoning behind why Ace had traveled to Onigashima is because he had come to you know, free the people who had been abducted from the mainland. So it was just a nice little thing he was doing for the people. But, of course, it wasn't a thing that was really going to stick for too long. But Ace does question, it's just like, man, this Yamada person is pretty friggin' powerful. I'm surprised they're not a captain. So, we really get to see that, you know, while Ace, yes, was very powerful, you know, there he wasn't th as powerful. He and Yamato were actually pretty evenly matched, which is still saying something, because as far as we know, Ace didn't have hockey of any sort, except for maybe King's Hockey? Maybe he had armament? Armament? Armament. I say where's good. Maybe he had armament, and he just wasn't able to, like, unleash that at the moment but you know he and Yamato just continue to fight and it's pretty obvious it goes on for a little while longer with Ace you know he really kind of gels with the emotions of Yamato it's just like oh these are you know problems that we have with each other uh, we we have in common. We both kind of feel like our fathers dealt us a raw deal, that we'll always be trapped underneath the legacy of our dads and all that. So you immediately get to see that they bonded immediately with Ace immediately, if I can say immediately enough, immediately <laughs> knew what Yamada was going through with the fact that her father was Kaido, a Yonko, one of the most wanted men in the world. And, you know, he's just like, hey, you hate your dad, but why is your heart chained to this place as well? There's some kind of connection here. There's some kind of reasoning why you're not leaving here. And Yamato actually was the one to initially break that golden statue from last chapter. You know, she broke it as 
you know, just because she was mad. It's just like, I can't live as free as I want to, as free as Odin. I want to go to sea. I want to have adventures. And as a sign of solidarity, you know, Ace comes in and punches the statue as well, just to kind of show that, that it's just like, yo, I get you, fam. I feel you. That passion for adventure, that feeling that your dad just kind of did you dirty when you were brought into this world. And I guess they tie up everyone else who's there, because, you know, you see, like, Baba Nuki and a few of the other headliners just in the background uh, when Yamato originally destroys the statue, so there is something there. But I think they end up, you know, taking them down and tying them up so that Yamato and Ace could just have a nice little drink together. It's a sweet little moment, honestly. With Imano still swearing to go out to sea one day, we see that they're also really busted and bruised from their little showdown. And Imano questions, it's just like, are there other like young pirates like you out in the world making a name for themselves? And we actually get a few name drops here. With Ace, you know, saying of note, uh, Cavendish, although he doesn't remember Cavendish's full name. He also talks about out um kid who was in the south blue at the time and law in the north and beige in the west so it just shows that you know during this time that ace was out with white beard and all that good stuff before luffy even had went to head out you know we also had all of them just going about their way doing their thing in the various different blues before they set out around the same time as Luffy, like the winds of destiny just all bringing them out to the Grand Line. And Yamato is just eating this up. She's full on got sparkles in her eyes over the tales of such strong pirates. So I definitely feel that, you know, Cavendish, Kid, Law, Beige, with them all being mentioned here, they're going to have significance somewhere later down the line. And I can't wait to see their return. But, you know, Ace even name drops his brother Luffy, saying that his brother would be the strongest of them all. And, you know, if he, Ace really did feel like Ace uh, Luffy was going to be something. But we actually find out, much like um, with Yasop when it came to Usopp, constantly name dropping his son, like, oh, my son's going to be so amazing. You know, uh, Yamato learned about Luffy because Ace would not shut up about Luffy. <laughs> like, there was just this belief that Luffy was going to be something. You know, but Yamato really took to Ace in that moment. And, you know, because when she originally broke it, she expected to be punished. But because Ace broke it, you know, saying that it was a warning to Kaido that next time he showed up, he would take the guy down, you know, Oh, all of Kaido's fury was brought down on Ace, but they never ended up meeting. Which could explain why Kaido was so determined to head to Marine for that one time. It's just like he wanted to kill Ace himself, just take the guy out. And during the course of this story, it's just like, hey, Momonosuke and Shinobu is just like, wait, father, you're Kaido's daughter? <laughs> and, but Yamato explains, it's just like, look, Huck, I hate my father. You know, that's all you need to know. That's all you need to understand. And while this is going on, Tama is also being informed by Nami about the situation with Ace. And, you know, as it turns out, uh, both Tama and Momonosuke did not know that, well, Tama didn't know that Ace was Luffy's brother and the connection between them. So Nami lets Tama know why Ace's death was such an impactful thing. Because he just told her outright that Ace was dead. But she just felt like Luffy was being a little heartless. Not the personal relationship between them. Um, but we do end up cutting over to where Queen is inside the performance floor. Where, you know, all of the headliner, well, the gifters, 
pleasures, the waiters, whatever. Kaido's forces, you know, Queen is rallying them, telling them, hey, if you don't want to die, you will go after, you know, Marco and the rest of them. With a lot of them being hesitant since Marco ended up kind of saving them for the most part from the Oni virus. It's just like, you know, how can we turn on a person who helped us out so much? But whereas uh, Marco draws all of their attention to him because of what Queen said, because Queen's just pissed off that Marco is ruining all his fun, he acts as a distraction so that Brooke and Robin can head into the main castle. So I'm not sure what they're going to be doing, if they're going to be helping out Chopper or trying to work their way around a different route. But... As everyone goes in on Marco, you know, because of his devil fruit ability, none of their hits really land on him. And so Marco ends up grabbing Zoro. They go flying off into the sky. I, you know, and Marco has his own flashback. It's flashbacks galore here, which is just filling in all the gaps of why Ace, you know, having gone to Wano, never went back. And that's ultimately that, you know, Whitebeard was just like, no, because... We would have a war. It would be all-out war, and many people would die. And that I, I don't know if that kind of shows the downside of Whitebeard's position, that ultimately it was this feeling that he had to stick around, he couldn't do too much because they would cause more harm than good during their battle. It would just cause more suffering for the people. Um... And, you know, apparently a lot of them knew about Odin's death, you know, particularly Izo and Marco, they all knew about it. Also, Marco's eating a pineapple, which is just like, and the pineapple situation just continues on with Marco. But, you know, they thought about going in, but it's just like, yeah, no, it would just cause too much destruction. But Ace really wanted to go back because he made a promise. He had wanted to go in and help. But after getting beaten down by Whitebeard, in a brief moment where Blackbeard being the douchebag that he is, and we see that he didn't completely gel with the team because he's just like, oh, Ace just wants to take down a big shot and take make a name for himself. But it's just like, no, that's not the situation. He just wanted to help out people. You know, he just wanted to, he made this lofty promise and he doesn't want to just renege on it. But... You know, Izo and Marco say that once Ace gets a little stronger, you know, after a little bit of training up and just growing in power, you know, Izo and Marco say that they'll accompany him and help out. But Ace was determined and saying that we could do this now. You know, we have enough strength. We have enough power. But all things considered, no, they would have gotten their asses beat. Like, going off of what we know of Kaido now, a few years of training would have only made so much of a difference. You know, Kaido would have wiped the floor with Marco, Izo, and Ace. It had they gone right then and there. Because with the strength that we've seen from Yamato, yeah, no. It would have been over in a goddamn heartbeat. And Marco is just remembering Ace, and he, he tears up a little bit over the fact that now he's just kind of here to fulfill that promise, to see it through, to help fulfill the promise that Ace made to the people of Wano. However, he'll have to get around Queen the Plague and King the Conflagration, as they are determined to stop him from interfering. He's just, you know, Queen's just like, the samurai are probably dead, and King says, and after we kill off Momosuke, Momonosuke, you know, the battle will be over. It's only a matter of time. But, uh, Marco is just like, look, you guys are looking down on this new generation, and that's ultimately where you will fail. You're not believing in the strength of this younger generation. So it shows that Marco, you know, he wished he'd, he's kind of lamenting the fact that he didn't believe enough in the newer generation, in the power of this hope for something better, something newer, for something the potential that they have to challenge forces like this. We also come to find out Queen has like a Gatling gun in his mouth or something. So I'm just like, how the hell does that work? But 
you know, we cut back to Momonosuke, who's just like, what? So, Ace was the son of Roger, and he was Luffy's big brother? Although, we're not getting into the whole separation that it's adoptive. They're adoptive to each other, but... Yamato laments the fact that it's just like, out of all the people in the world, you ran into Luffy, the son, the brother of Ace, who was the son of Roger, whose crew, whose ship you were born on, and of, out of all the pirates out there, of you met him, and for him to bring you to this country that Ace had declared that he would free at some point, it's just like, that has to be fate, and I have to agree with Yamato, you know, like all these things working in tandem all all at the same time, there has to be a greater sense of meaning to that. And Yamato even notes, Luffy has the letter D in his, as his middle name. So I'm just like, yo, we're getting teases of the will of D as well? Because there has to be some kind of theory that Odin had, or knowledge that he had in terms of the will of D. So I'm just like, what do you know, Yamato? What do you know? But then our chapter starts to come to a close as we have Charlotte Linlin -Lin meeting up with Kaido. You see nothing but rubble all around him, so it's just like, what happened to the scabbard? Who knows? We don't see bodies, we just see rubble all over. But you have Prometheus eating up some of the fire nearby, and Zeus kind of melding in with the thunder clouds and all that, so they're charging up their abilities. And, you know, Big Mom's just like, oh, Straw Hat hasn't gotten here yet? Hmm. That's weird, I expected more. So it's just like, I love the way that Yonko now talk about L Luffy. Whereas before, he wasn't really a blip on most Yonko's radar. It's just like, now it's just like, ah, oh, Straw Hat, he hasn't made it up here yet. I was hoping to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> but, you know, we also get confirmation that... Big Mom knows that Nico Robin can read the Poneglyphs, and she only wants her alive. So that we see the big target on Nico Robin's head. And Kaido even calls out, it's just like, D didn't you have that three-eyed kid? You know, what happened with her? And Big Mom explains that it's an ability that Pudding would have to wake, awaken within herself, the awakening of her third eye in order to read that. But she is just like, there's no telling how long that will take. Well, you have a perfectly good person who can already read Poneglyphs. So why not just torture them and force them to tell you what's, what's what? So, um, Charlotte also kind of questions where, <laughs> where, Kaido is going to put down Onigashima. He's just like, oh yeah, I'm putting it right down on top of Kazu of the flower capital, the, you know, pa the palace of Wano in the capital. And Big Mom's like, yeah, but isn't there like a party going on there? Aren't a whole bunch of people going to die? And Kaido's just like, ah, whatever. Always going to it's easy to get more slave labor. Just like so callous. Like, goddamn. If you didn't believe they were villains before. And then Big Mom just, like, on the DL is just like, so, uh, the rogue polyglyph isn't there then. And God is just like, dude, are, are you even trying to hide your intentions at this point? You know, at least show some tact and decorum. But. Uh, Charlotte Linlin's just like, hey, whoa, 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 don't, don't think so lowly of me. You know, a lot of the things I do for you is because I still think of you as my little brother from back when we were on the Rocks crew. You know, ultimately when Rocks fell, didn't I give you that legendary fish, fish, fruit? What? The, f the fish, fish, fruit? Are you serious? Are you Fucking serious. But it makes sense too that he has the fish fish fruit model koi. And if you know anything about Japanese mythology, you know that there's the legend that if a koi manages to make their way up a waterfall, they will transform into a dragon. Like, 
Yo, it's mythological. That's what it is. That's why we just held off so long on finding out what Kaido's fruit is. Because we hadn't, you know, we needed some time. Because the revelation was just going to blindside people. It's just like, yo, wait, what? It, it's based off of myth. It's based off a legend. So that keeps it mythical at the same time. You know, the fish, fish, fruit model koi. The Koi with the ability to turn into a dragon. For all you Pokemon fans, it's what Magikarp is based off of. Oh my god, it's so cool, so fantastic. It it, it just dumbfounded me. Because it's just like, oh, the, the dots just connected in my head. Just because of the a little bit of knowledge I have on Japanese mythology. And I even think they explained it at one point in this series because you have the waterfall that takes you up to Onigash, um, to uh, Wano, the only way, and you have all the koi fish just, you know, leaping upward, and, you know, in order to get into Wano, you can, you know, attach your ride onto one of them, and they'll help you get up there, so it's just an interesting premise for the most part, but considering that Kaido can't survive in seawater, how would he have unlocked this ability? I'm very curious as to how this actually worked, and I'm curious as to how many people don't understand why this would be the case. It's just like, but he's a dragon, not a fish. It's just like, yeah, it's Japanese mythology. It's, it's Japanese mythology. So, that's fantastic. I love I love that revelation. And they reaffirm that they are after One Piece. That is their goal, and they won't be stopped until they do it. So next chapter drops, you know, two weeks from now on January 3rd. So I can't wait. I know there'll probably be an early release at some point, but... I'll hold off until I get the official release because, you know, sometimes you got to be kind of careful with what you get from some of this stuff because there's some wording that sometimes throws you off a little bit. So I'm trying to keep in the know for the most part, but a great chapter, the discussion between Charlotte Lin Lin and Kaido, the revelation that he had the fish fish fruit and their relationship as a whole, though I, I'm still kind of dubious on it as a whole. Yamato and her her backstory with Ace Ace's all involvement all together because there's a lot of people who have connections with Ace and in a roundabout way Luffy, Roger, all this and that. You know, the revelation of how Yamato met Ace, how Ace went to Wano, the discussion between Ace and Marco and Izo and Whitebeard, why Whitebeard didn't go to Wano to help out. You know, <clears throat> I really do, I, I'm still kind of surprised <clears throat> that it, he, they never attempted it. I really am, that Izo never went forward, but, you know, he stayed with Whitebeard, so he, he had some trust in Whitebeard's decision, but, you know, Odin died 20 years ago, man. You know, I have to assume that at some point they had to have tried to go out and stop Kaido, but it just ended up with them, you know, getting some casualties. And, you know, Whitebeard is someone who cares about his family, and he just didn't want to risk any more of their lives. I have to assume something like that, because it just perplexes me that there wouldn't have been at least some degree of an attempt. Yes, it makes sense that they w felt that a battle like that would cost more lives than anything else, but I really do feel like it, there, there's something there. But we're leading into a showdown between possibly Marco the Phoenix versus King and maybe Zoro versus Queen? It seems like we're heading into that. It's really just hard to tell. I'm not quite sure. And what are Brooke and Robin running off to do? Some Something inside the castle, I'm not very sure. But... You know, we'll just have to wait and see. I wonder if there was any more involvement Ace had in Wano. It feels a little too cut and dry for my taste, but maybe that's all it really takes. 
but tell me your thoughts and theories in the comment section below if you like this video leave me a like if you didn't feel free to leave me a dislike i'll understand you know this video ran a little bit long subscribe and hit the bell icon because we're coming up on chapter 1000 and it will be a sight to see i know it gonna have that greatness that one piece greatness that oda is known for so much it's gonna be fantastic and i hope you'll join me but until next time i've been dudes dizden and i will see you later Bye bye